CataractCoach.com. Welcome back to our podcast. Today, episode number 12, with Dr. Amar Agarwal. And you may know Dr. Agarwal from his many inventions in ophthalmology, from sub one millimeter cataract surgery using the bimanual technique, the phaconit technique, from the glued eye well, the pu- pinhole pupiloplasty. I mean, the list goes on and on. Truly an innovator in our field, an educator, an incredible surgeon, and just an incredibly strong leader in our field. He has shown us that we will learn from our mistakes. His video series of FACO Nightmares taught me so much and gave me nightmares too. I think you'll really enjoy the podcast. He's a very sweet and kind and gentle man, and it's just a pleasure to spend time talking with him. Check it out. So I want to welcome Dr. Amar Agarwal to our Cataract Coach Podcast. Dr. Agarwal has been a mentor to me for more than 20 years, and I've learned so much about him. You may recognize him from his many contributions to ophthalmology, new inventions such as phaco knit, glued eye well, pinhole pupiloplasty, the list goes on. He's written countless books on ophthalmology, and my favorite of all, he is the master of surgical video contests. He has the most amazing complex cases, and he's not afraid to show you how to get out of trouble when that situation happens to all of us. So Dr. Agarwal, I want to welcome you to our podcast. Welcome to you, first of all, and it's such an honor, Uday. You are a star. You know, I want to tell all the viewers here that Uday invited me for this lovely podcast of his. And in America, there was a voting for the best eye doctors in the world and in United States. And Uday is there on the top of the list. That's phenomenal. I call him like the Hollywood star because he is the <laughs> Hollywood star. And the cataract coach system, which Uday has started, it educates so many. I tell you what, a doctor can treat one patient, but when you educate like Uday does, he treats millions because many doctors watch his videos, learn from them and implement them on his patients. Effectively, those surgeries which those doctors are doing are actually being done virtually by Uday. Oh, you're too kind. From him. You're too that kind. That is a fact. But you know, the, the fact. nice part is what I learned from you is that by watching surgical video, we can learn so much. And what, like That it, is a fact. Yeah, so even the techniques that you've pioneered, first, it's brilliant how you even thought of them. But then by making these videos, we can teach the entire world. And now with our modern cell phones, you can see this on your mobile phone anywhere on the planet in high definition. That's correct. You can see them all on high definition. And these iPhones and all these phones have changed the whole ball game. But I think the thing which really changes it is education, which you do. Really, I tell you what, a person sitting in a small city in a small country can watch your podcast, watch your cat track coach and learn from it. They don't have to fly all the way to the United States to be with Uday. That's the best thing, no doubt about it. But if they can't do that, I think these coaching system which you have got is the best. Yeah, I even think oftentimes surgeon will ask me, can they come do an observership in our surgery center in Beverly Hills? But, you know, I say there's, I don't have an assistant head on my microscope. It's just the surgeon head and a camera. So I said, even if you come in person, you're just going to watch it on the movie screen, on the TV screen. Correct. So you may as well just watch the video there. Absolutely correct. You hit the nail on the head, Uday. And I can tell you one thing, Uday. I've been watching you for so long. And the way you teach people, it's something unbelievable. Even today, I watch Cataract Coach. <laughs> and I sit and watch him to go into the Cataract Coach system of yours to learn what new things you're showing and how you're educating so many of them. And I'm telling this from the heart, not because I'm on your podcast. I do this every time, Cataract Coach. Oh, I'm so honored. You know, honestly, I learn more by making the videos. Every day, people submit to me five to ten videos a day. I download and watch all of them, and I learn so much by making these videos. So it's a, it's a two-way street. We, as you know, we learn, the more we teach, the more we learn. That's a good point. It's a really good point, actually, you know. The more we teach, the more we learn. It's a good point. It's a very solid point, actually. So, so, so Amr, how do you get the energy? I'm always impressed that I see you first at meetings all over the world. And then the amount of things you produce, like in ophthalmology, 
people sometimes don't realize you've got a few dozen books that you've written already. We've written about 80 books. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And they are people, written in English, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and even Chinese. And it's across the board, every topic in ophthalmology, even neuro, yeah, neuro ophthalmology, even. Yeah, neuro ophthalmology, even angiography, FFA was written for Slack. I did a book on FFA for Slack. I've also got a four volume book, which is for undergraduates and for postgraduates, actually, a full four volume book on entire ophthalmology. Oh, fantastic. So maybe to do during your residency training. Exactly. And yeah. that, that takes you from the basics to even the exactly. advanced. Exactly. Starts from anatomy, everything right up to the end. Wow. Maybe I should, I should review those as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we forget. We get so carried away just doing cataract surgery that we forget all the other subspecialties in ophthalmology. We need to get more exposure maybe. I think ophthalmology is a great field to be in. And I advise everyone who come to me whether they should do ophthalmology. I say, yes, that's a great field to be in. Because the advancements I see a lot are in ophthalmology, cardiology. I think basically because I feel without a heart, you can't live. Sure. And without eyes, there's no point living. Uh-huh. And that's why perhaps industry has really pumped in a lot of money into R&D, in eye, and in a lot of treatment for eyes. Oh, yes. Yeah. The amount of innovation in ophthalmology is amazing. We, we don't operate the same way we did even 10 years ago. Yes. It just keeps right. evolving. Absolutely. What's the key to helping a surgeon stay current with the new trends? One of the challenges or difficulties is when new things come out, surgeons are, are, are having a harder time to learn these new things because they're doing it on their own, in their own private practice. I think one thing which I tell them is, and again I'm repeating it, is programs like yours, Cataract Coach, that is what they need to be in. Unless they watch those videos, as you said, if they come and see Uday, they're going to operate, yes, it's good. But to be honest, if you see through the videos, it's very good. So if you cannot travel, the best next thing you can do is, how much time does it take for anyone to just enter into a cat track course or these social media systems which are educating like YouTube, etc. And everybody puts videos on YouTube nowadays. Sure. So they can learn a lot of new things from it. The advantage to be honest to you where cat track coach comes is, if I go into YouTube, I have to search. Right. In cat track coach, I get the best because you've already done the job for me. (laughs) So to be honest to you, if I want to learn something, let's say I already learned it because you have selected the best videos, the best techniques, and they put it into one system, in one platform. If I go into YouTube, let's say if I type, what will I type? I might not find a new topic to type on. Here you've already done that for us. And that's where life becomes very easy. For sure. What about wet labs? Is that a helpful thing as well? To, to be honest, I think yes and no, because we do the wet labs in these conferences. But let us be very honest. If you do in a model eye or let's say an animal eye, it will give you a little bit of feeling. But it's not the same. It's not the same. Unless you get into the system, you know, you will not just, you have to be in the system and actually operating to understand thing. Because just doing a model eye will not take you too far. It will take you a little bit to get you stimulated a bit, but not take you to the end. Now, you know, one of the most popular videos I made in the last year was when I talked about the number of um, European residents and even U.S. doctors who come to India to get hands-on experience. This has become quite a huge phenomenon. And I know you, you offer such a similar training program as well. See, ours is a training program. It's not that you operate. The issue is to educate. For sure. Now, one is to show on videos. One is to make them learn how to operate. And that's what the answer is, I think. See, if you, but it is a systematized program where people are educating. Somebody is with you operating, showing you this is the step. For example, when they come to me, I would show them, listen, how to manage, let's say, a PC rupture. Sure. So they're watching, learning through the observation tube. And that's how I think they can improve. Fantastic. But I would suggest everyone, I think social media today is the answer. Like, you know, when you are on the net, you can learn a lot through the net. Sure. You know, second is obviously, as I said, when you come personally and learn. Third is to attend conferences. Because when you go to conferences, you get a chance to sit with Uday or with anybody else 
whom you have learned from and ask him one or two doubts that will stimulate the person's brain again and say aspire them to become better yeah that that's a good point yeah it makes you wonder i guess what's, what's the real big benefit of our in person meetings we just came back from the ASCRS meeting in San Diego here i think the best part of the meeting was meeting people in person most important you see we are all social animals just doing a zoom call is not that exciting Whereas suppose I go for a conference and then I have a dinner with Uday Devgan in the night or in the evening, you know it makes a difference because we sit, chat. Some points are there which we can talk about and discuss and learn from. Sure. Whereas a Zoom call meeting might not give us the same effect. Suppose there is somebody there in the ASRS meeting, they come and meet you, or meet any other big stalwart. You know they learn a lot even by talking. It might not be subject matter only talking. It might just be talking of how do you manage your day. Right, t- whole day for sure. Not necessarily specific to ophthalmology. Yes, but that is a very important point. How to manage your day, how to remain fit. For example, small points, but they are extremely important. You might tell them, listen, I eat this, I eat veg, I eat fish. You know, small topics like that. You know, I maintain my calories. Yeah. Speaking of that, what is your day like? Last time we talked, we talked. For a long time, I, I have actually interviewed you before. Twenty years ago, we did a I had did a brief podcast, five minute podcast, and I was impressed at your normal daily schedule. What's your daily typical daily schedule look like now? Look, uh, it's still the same every day of my life. To be honest to you, and before I say that, I tell you what I was listening to Jackie Chan. Sure, and he was getting the Oscar, and I heard his interview. He said, "You know what." Every day of my life, I get up. I do the same kicks, the same punches. There's no difference. Okay, if I had been romancing my heroines, things like that, do you think Oscar would have given me this Oscar which they're giving me? No. Mm. Whereas the Academy is giving me this Oscar because every day of my life I've been repeating it. Many people think, why are you repeating the same thing every day of your life? But if you see the top guys, they are consistent with it. So it's about it's all about the consistency <clears throat> then. It's all about consistency. So this is what I feel like. For example, your cataract coach you have started so long back, but it's every day you are doing the same thing. Yeah, for example, your right. podcast. And it was, yeah, new, you know? new video every day for cataract coach. New video every day. So, but it's the same teaching system. Sure. So if you follow that formula, anybody follows that formula, they will be successful. So kind of stick. Success it. is always relative. Yeah. Look, everybody is not going to become a Tom Cruise. Not as everybody aspire to be a Tom Cruise. or let's say a steve jobs okay but if we are there tomorrow if we are slightly even 1 mm higher we are winners all the way i think the only person you compete with in your life should be yourself well, that's no a great point else. if you compete yeah. with yourself that's all look at yourself today am i just 1 micron better than what i was yesterday and i'm a winner yeah that's true sometimes we really lose sight lose sight that <laughs> If you become one percent better a week or That's even all. a month, the effect of compounding that with time is tremendous. You know, I give an example of going to a gym where you can learn a lot. In a gym, you'll always find somebody better than you. For sure. Somebody, if you are lifting five kilograms, there'll be somebody lifting six kilograms. Of course. There'll be somebody lifting sixty kilograms. It does not matter when you lift five kilograms. After one month, you might be lifting six kilograms. You are a winner all the way. You are competing in a gym with yourself. In life, there's always going to be somebody better than you, but there are a lot of people worse than you. Yeah. You know, if you look back and see, oh, there are a lot of people worse than me, so I'm pretty in a good space. Yeah. So the like the saying goes, right? Comparison with others is the thief of joy. Lovely sentence. Yeah, I can't, I'll have to look up who said that quote. I've heard it many times. Well, I'll say Uday Devgan said it. No, <laughs> I can't take credit. But yeah, I think that's very true. But when we compare with ourselves and we see even an incremental, like you said, even a minuscule amount of progress, it's still progress. Exactly. I think we only compete with ourselves. The day, who's our speed breaker? You know, many people ask me, look, you know, my father was not big, my wife is not big, my husband is not big. No. Your speed breaker is only one person. It's you yourself. Who's your speed breaker? If I ask, analyze myself. Who's my speed breaker? It's me myself. It's how what I am doing. I'm blocking myself from growing. Sure. Everybody doesn't understand this point of being a speed breaker. They think you know, no, I was not born with this. I was not born with this. If I was so and so's son, perhaps I would have had a 
upstart in life. You're creating your own doubts in your mind, which yes. a- a- ends up sabotaging your own future. You're correct. Absolutely correct. So the, I guess for ophthalmology, to, to, to learn sur- these new surgical techniques, I guess the key is consistency. Be consistent. Learn from videos every day. Practice in the, in the wet lab. And then more importantly, practice in person. But just make, pro- every time you do the case, get better, better. Like when I was learning DMEC, there's a difference between DMEC number one and DMEC number 10. Correct. Absolutely correct. You know, one more thing which I tell many people is this, that, you know, you're very comfortable in the sofa you're sitting in. Yeah. The day we learn to get out of that comfort zone, we go to the next level. But invariably, mm. let's say if I'm doing penetrating keratoplasty, as an example, since you brought in DMEC, I'm very comfortable doing PKs. Now, I don't want to do lamina keratoplasty. But unless we move into that space sure. of a lamina keratoplasty, we won't know how good or how bad we are. Or how good or how bad the patient will be. So you got to get out of that comfort zone and then strive to become something better. You, That's the answer. Okay to be a little uncomfortable. You should be a bit uncomfortable because otherwise you become very comfortable and when you become comfortable, you become complacent. Yeah, and when complacency. you become complacent, you're gone. Yes, complacency. That's the key, I think. If you see any of these big guys, and it's not only in ophthalmology, whether you take in movie stars or you take top businessmen or top scientists or a Madame Curie who discovered the greatest things like radium, you know, they've all never been complacent. And that's where the success comes from. They're striving to do something better. It might work. It might not work. I'm not saying it works every time. Okay. You might fall. But what's wrong if you fall? You'll always get up and always climb again. So the surgeons who are saying, I am only doing a divide and conquer <coughs> technique. And I just, I don't want to learn fake or chop because I'm not comfortable with it. Your answer is, of course, you're not comfortable. That's a good thing. You still have to learn it. Exactly. Because let's look at it this way. If by chance someone else is only doing fake chop, he's not an idiot. He's not an idiot. There has to be some reason why he's doing it. Sure. He's moving to something better. Obviously, you can try it out, give it a fair shot, and then say, no, this technique is not a good technique in my hand. So fair enough. But you tried it. But you tried it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying to be foolhardy. And if you're an anterior segment surgeon to go and remove a drop nucleus from the retina. I'm not saying that. But in your own space, can I improve a little bit? Sure. You know? Sure, sure. I would think that is a way forward for every human being in life. And again, I say this is not only in ophthalmology, in anything in life. Sure. Just the incremental progress. So to write 80 books, it just sounds like I was still almost blown away by this number. See, you, you must to be honest time to you, I don't day. think it's something great. It just... It's not me. It's just, I've been built like that. I think, to be honest, I can't take credit for it. It's just the person on the top, the Almighty. He's made me like, I used to write four books a year. Wow. So, now, the thing is, I don't have topics much to write on because I'm doing only ophthalmology. I don't do anything else. <laughs> you know? A- a- so, 80 books covers pretty much all of ophthalmology. <laughs> covers, covers nearly everything in ophthalmology. <laughs> so, but... The issues, again, I can't take credit. I think it's just inborn. You can't just write. Like some people, for example, you are gifted in teaching, in educating through these podcasts or through cataract coach or etc. It's inbuilt in you. To be honest with you, I think it's, you're working on a spinal cord. I give an example of a spinal cord. For example, if you touch a hot plate like that, you suddenly take your hand off because it does not go to the brain it works on a spinal cord system. That's why you're fast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The reflexes. Look at yourself in surgery and look at yourself in your podcast or in your cat track coach Uday. I tell you what, you are not working through brain. You're working on spinal cord. That's why it comes like this to you. I have been so, accused of being brainless sometimes. <laughs> no, no, it's not brainless. The thing is, what I tell people is, if you take these top guys who are, let's say, baseball hitters, that ball is coming at such speed, you know? I don't think the image can go to the brain and then they can hit. Those who are top in the game hit it through spinal cord. Yeah, it's like a reflex. It's automatic. It's a reflex. Exactly. So, simple trick which I tell people is check whatever you are doing. Do you enjoy it? If you are enjoying it, are you working on spinal cord or is it going up to the brain? Once you're starting on the brain level, I tell you what, that's not your forte. What is your forte when something is working like this for you on Spinal cord. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल कुकिंग यू आर अ वेरी गुड कुक ओके आई एम जीरो I I do do not know the spelling of that word, so I don't do cooking. But I have to eat. So simple way, either I go to a restaurant, or go through a Swiggy or Zomato and order online or Uber Eats. Alternately, hire a chef or a cook to eat. For sure. Either way, I will be a winner that way. It doesn't mean I have to do everything in life. I can always delegate things which I'm not good at. to something else Pick. or someone else okay so this goes back to our other topic when you go into the operating room you sh- and you're doing your routine your lineup of your 20 characters whatever you should be in that state of flow the mental state of flow correct where things are just you're not overthinking things you're just things are just happening beautifully and smoothly and naturally <clears throat> correct but everybody might not be as gifted a surgeon as let's say uday devgar because i to be honest to you i train 10 to 20 people from everywhere every month wow they are with me wow okay every month so i understand that everybody ni- need not be as gifted as let's say uday devgan is does not matter you're not a failure okay all i tell people is just go slow in your surgery if you go slightly slower in the speed i see surgeons sometimes operating very fast trying to be as good they think if you're fast you're good no look if you're fast okay well and good but your slow does not mean you are bad yeah for sure you know the issue is the end result so if you are not that gifted go down in your speed with time once you master the technique the speed will automatically it'll come. It'll come naturally it'll come naturally yeah in fact in terms of being efficient my number one pearl for being efficient in the operating room is eliminate time wasting that's not part of the surgery From Correct. Surgery is over, and why does it take twenty minutes to get the patient out of the room, or why does it take so long to set up the room? But don't worry about speeding up your actual surgical cut time. That leads to uh, mistakes. That leads to errors and complications. So I like Absolutely your idea. Correct. Slow it down. Go at your own pace for the actual surgical cut time. I agree with you blindly on this topic. You're absolutely correct. Yeah, that's that's a that's a yeah really important topic because I think sometimes we do feel, especially in younger surgeons, that that urgency to like be faster and faster and faster. But there's really if it's, it's not needed, if it's my eye having surgery, please spend an extra one or two minutes and make it beautiful. Good point. <laughs> you know what difference does it make? What will it make that five minute extra? Nothing. Not- in the end, the patient wants a twenty twenty vision. Yeah. So you see, what they what we are planning is, if you see ophthalmology sector, it's an unorganized sector. Okay. You mean you, there are so many doctors, but doing their own system. So in Agarwal group of eye hospitals, right now we have got, we've got one hundred and fifty hospitals. One hundred and fifty. Wow, that's amazing. And in multiple so we, countries now. We are in eleven countries. But my message wow. is this simple. See, we have about five thousand people working for us. Wow. Okay. So what is our message here is simple that we are trying to make somebody might be a very good surgeon some might not be that gifted but the idea is to streamline everybody into the same system so that all give quality eye care how do you keep that consistency of high level of care for 150 hospitals so let's say i'm sitting here in la right now with you okay all the 50, 150 hospitals are running right now i'm not there correct yes let's take even if i'm in chennai india where i am okay my center in mozambique is still delivering in africa okay it might be in zambia so the answer is simple we get the doctors top doctors groom them train them and many of them are so good they're already into the system mm. so we have a clinical board also which runs the system to check everyone See, you are trying to create a system where things are more made simple. The doctor does not have to worry about his admin. Otherwise, you are worrying about okay, this administration, this administration. No, they are doctors. They need to focus on their surgeries. Sure. So we take off all the other burdens, and our team is there, which does the rest of the job. So in a single day, right now, we are seeing approximately every day twenty-five thousand patients in a day. Wow, what if a day? In a day, and approximately doing about twenty-five thousand surgeries a month. Wow, that's unbelievable numbers. So, so what happens is because of that, the scale is there, and we are opening one hospital every week. Oh my goodness! 
<laughs> so when you're looking at that scale, yeah. the reason is you have a team. You can't expect one man to do everything. Now, if someone has got a small center, let's say with 10 people, all I tell them is don't get disheartened. Streamline the system so that the person who's running the outpatient department focuses on that. The OT person focuses on the OT, sure. on the OR, yeah. so that the system is there. You don't have endophthalmitis, sterilization is clean, everything is ready for you. That way, your own system will start growing and you can focus on your surgery, which is your core strength, or on seeing patients, which is your core strength. Yeah, yeah, of course, right. Yeah, exactly. We'd, we'd always rather be in the operating room than doing administrative yeah. work. That's the issue. I think as doctors, we should do what we are good at. Or for that matter, in any, anybody in any field, an athlete, you know, if he's a sports person in a particular field, he's very good. Take a person who's very good in baseball. If you make him play chess, he'll be a failure. <laughs> and the same way, if you take someone who plays very good chess, a grandmaster and ask him, listen, let's play cricket or baseball. I mean, he's going to fail there. Sure. Because I think we're all got some gift from the almighty. The issue is to find that gift. If we can find our own gift, you might be a very good chef. You might be a good in anything. Focus on that gift. That's why I told you the spinal cord. So how do I know whether I'm gifted in something? Check. Am I working on a brain power or am I working on a spinal cord? If Uday Devgan checks his surgeries, he's working on spinal cord. When you sit in the operating table, you're working on spinal cord. You're not working on brain power. Yeah, it's it my, comes automatically yeah, to you yeah, what to do next. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, the you know? uh, yeah, operating room is my happy place. Yeah, but if I, same thing, if I, let's say I ask Uday uh, to be a makeup artist. I have no okay? idea. Yeah. See, Completely then you're lost. going to think, okay, should I put makeup here? Should I put makeup here? Sure. Should I do this? My hair like this, like this? then you are a failure. I'm just giving that yeah, as a yeah, simile. For sure. for sure. Yeah, so know your core strengths and weaknesses and, and do what you're really good at. And the other positions, hire people who are better at those positions. Assemble That's a team. That's another very good point you brought out just now, Uday. Invariably, what happens in life is we tend to work with people less smart than us. It should be the reverse. Always get into your team people smarter than you. Sure. If you work with people who are smarter than you, you will automatically get elevated. So don't have a complex. Say, listen, if I get somebody smarter than me, uh, I will look like a stupid person. No, you never look like a stupid person because that person will elevate you to become smarter. Well, it's like playing tennis with someone who's much better than you. Yes. You're a little intimidated, but you become a better player. You will become a better player, hundred percent. Yeah. It might be minuscule level better, but still be better. Because you're playing with someone who's better than you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. if I'm playing with Roger Federer, obviously I'm not going to become Roger. Okay. <laughs> but listen, <coughs> as bad as I am, if I can become slightly better, watching him play with me, and he'll give me some tips. Look, your forehand should be like this. Your backhand should be like this. That's enough. But then we have to be receptive. To, to yes. learning from taking the input That's of others. That's the most important That's... thing in life. I think pu people who are receptive always succeed. Yeah, that can be one of the challenges though. The word, the worst letter in the world is actually a three letter word, not a four letter word. It is E-G-O, ego. Oh, yeah. If we throw that down the drain, I tell you what, all of us will be successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what you said earlier, too, about making your own limitations. You, you create your own limitations with your own self-doubt. Correct. And, you know, again, going back to when we talked 20 years ago on that first podcast that we did with, the, with Slack, with Ocular Surgery News, you told me about <laughs> someone who climbed in Mount Everest. And you said, wow, what an amazing thing that would be. And then you said, and by the way, this person who climbed Everest has no legs. And you say, if he can climb Everest with no legs then what is stopping me from doing anything? Just think about it. The battle is in the brain. Yeah. This is where the battle is. Uh. If you do this, you win. You know something? If you don't, if you go to a surgery and say, listen, no, I cannot do this. No, no, no. You lost the battle. I'm not saying be foolhardy. Sure, of course, of course. I'm not saying be foolhardy. But if it is within your space, first, Change your brain and say, listen, I am going to do this. I'll go slowly, 
but i'll go at my pace and i'll go comfortably and i'll try to do the best for this patient because the end of the day that patient has given his eye to us yeah. this is a huge a, thing. a big trust it's a big trust sometimes we go wrong i don't say we don't we succeed every time but most of the time our endeavor should be can we make this patient better so that his quality of life changes that's where the game is and if someone is not that gifted my second suggestion to them is refer if you have a complicated subluxated cataract and i cannot manage it and if i am in la refer it to uday devgan nothing wrong if you if you are in new york refer it to someone there or to uday devgan in la or anyone you know who can manage that case better than what you can that word ego if it goes out of your window you are a winner all the way yeah that's you know even for the referring i think more often than not these days instead of doing the yamane technique or sutured in with the gortex lens i actually now send the patients to a former resident of mine who's a very talented vitreoretinal surgeon and they get a complete partial plane of vitrectomy and he does such a beautiful job i actually split the workload i tell him what i well to implant make sure the patient ends up just a little myopic and then as you can know in those in those lenses it's sometimes hard to predict the exact effective lens position so as long as the patient ends up myopic 3 months later i'll do the patient's lasik or prk patients are so incredibly happy but yeah the yeah. idea that it's okay to refer out things to someone who you think would do a better job and i think for these complicated sutured in lenses or yamane i think the patients do better with a full part plan of vitrectomy good point so what i tell people is either way if you refer out to somebody it doesn't make you less sure actually the person whom you are referring out to will always send back the patient to you because people have a fear that if i send to somebody that patient might not come back to me which is not true sure you know because the surgeon whom you are referring it to is a very decent person whom you are sending it to and will send it the patient back to you after the surgery for sure so that patient actually becomes yours for life because they understand listen this doctor sent me to somebody is better in that particular area yeah, only for sure for sure this doesn't make him for sure. better in life as a whole it's not true he might be good in that particular field and then the patient knows you have a good heart you only want what's best for them even if Absolutely. it means it's not in your hands correct yeah correct these are important lessons how do we get all these important lessons learned or across to the young ophthalmologists. We have so many young ophthalmologists listening to our podcast still in training, some even medical students, first few years in practice. These are such important lessons which I felt weren't taught in residency and you don't learn them until one pearl here or there over the course of 10 20 years. The answer again to learn these tricks are one through social media like yours. Second is to go to conferences and meet people sure even after the symposium or the instruction course people come to me and ask me their doubts don't hesitate in asking the doubt if you do not know that question please remember nothing wrong in asking how was stupid the question might be if i don't know i don't know of course again it comes down to ego why people don't ask questions because they are scared listen people will think i'm an idiot that i don't know this actually the person sitting next to you also might not know the answer it's all the same <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so there's nothing wrong in asking someone, okay, how do I do this technique? How will I do my fourth row pupil last it? Can you tell me some tricks on it? Nothing wrong in it. Yeah. What's yeah. wrong? For sure. How do you come up with these amazing ideas like the the pinho pupil plasty, the fourth row pupil plasty? My one that I thought was amazing was people may not realize 20 years ago you described fako through 700 micro incisions sub 1 mm incisions 20 years ago see again i tell you what uday to be honest to you all these ideas i cannot say are mine they all come from the top that is the bottom line nobody can innovate or invent something from themselves it's not humanly possible you can make 1 $10 $10 you can make 10 dollars 1000 dollars or a billion dollars yes you can do that you can multiply it but if you talk of something new any topic electricity planes right brothers it's humanly impossible for a person to bring something new to the world unless the message comes from the almighty comes into your head 
and you are able to bring it out. That's what my personal belief. Yeah, I I can see that. I can see that. We also. It's not uh, possible. It's not possible. If somebody says that, listen. Uh, I did this or microwave, you know, we invented the microwave oven. It cannot just happen. Yes, no doubt we are the messengers. For sure. But the message has to come from somewhere else. For sure, for sure. You know, you talked earlier about going to the meetings and, and meeting people. And I always thought one of my favorite courses at any academy or ASRS meeting is your FACO Nightmares course. And just to have someone who's such an amazing surgeon like you present such cases where there are potential iatrogenic issues or mistakes made and how to learn from these. I, I think it was amazing. How did you come with the idea of FACO nightmares? Actually, what happened was one of the main issues which I feel here is we always show what is good. The, but if we actually yeah. show what is bad, people learn much more. Yeah. And then they begin to understand, hold on, if this guy can create a complication like this, there's nothing wrong which I have created. You know, and because we all create these complications. Nobody can be, the only person who does not do that is the person who's not operating. <laughs> right. So the, if, the saying is, there are only two types of doctors who have no complications. Those who don't right. operate and those who aren't quite fully truthful. <laughs> exactly. You hit the nail on the head again. You know, so if we learn to accept, hold on, there is a problem. There is a complication. Now let's see, can we manage it? That is the answer. If, see, why do people come, patients come to Uday Devgan rather than to, not to someone else in your own city? Let's give an example. They don't come because they think you can manage their surgery. No. They come because if they get into a complication, they know you can manage that. Yeah, that's true. For example, I tell people when they come to me, they are learning FACOs or whatever they want. I say, very good. But please understand. Today, somebody is a 3-minute surgeon, somebody is a 5-minute surgeon, somebody is a 20-minute surgeon, but at the end of the day, all those patients are 20-20. Right. You want to go to the next level, move into complicated surgeries. That's when patients will be getting referred to you by an optometrist or by your neighboring doctor. So, don't be in the comfort zone. Move into complications like a subluxated cataract or a case with a PC rupture where it's happened and I have to fix a lens or something like that. That will take you to the next level and once your armamentarium increases, the referral basis will increase and your surgical work workload will increase. Oh, you're so right. I'll tell you a story from way back in my career. It's probably one of my best pearls for any young ophthalmologist listening. Is I would go to referring doctors and say, I know you already refer patients to this other surgeon or these, this group of surgeons. But, you know, I specialize in these very difficult, very challenging cases. Just send me those cases. And then when you'd get those very challenging cases from a referring doctor and the patient goes back to that doctor with a beautiful result, that doctor then thinks, wait a minute, let me just send all my cases to, this, to, to him. And it just grows your volume by specializing in the unusual, very challenging, very difficult cases. It grows your overall volume. Correct. Absolutely correct. It is that which makes you slightly better and will separate you. And more important, forget the referral base improving. It will make you happy. Because when you go to a conference and you see somebody like Uday, Devgan, etc. Showing some great case. Then you feel inferior. Listen, I'm not able to do this. So okay? I, I learned from you. I show my, I show my complications. <laughs> so, you know, if they can learn how to manage some simple case. Yeah. It will make life easier. So, I'm not asking them to go immediately flying high. But as I say, go stepwise and learn the systems. So that you can become a better surgeon. Yeah, in incremental, step by step, step by step. So, so those are your kind of good pearls for young ophthalmologists. So go to the meetings, don't set yep. limitations on yourself, keep improving little by little, be your own toughest critic, but also only compete with yourself, embrace being a little bit uncomfortable, learn new techniques. What else do we, what else do we forget? Social media, that's oh. where you will learn. Yeah. That's the biggest tool today in the world is social media. You can learn a lot through YouTube or your cataract coach or any such sites like these. There are so many of them where people can sit and learn videos. Because if you sit and learn videos, you know, you'll improve yourself. For, for sure, for sure. What ad advice you have for young surgeons who want to actually get into, like you are, key opinion leader space, presenting at the meetings. How do you break in for a young person? I get asked this question all the time. 
I think your work will talk for itself. Got it. Yeah. If you start doing good work, it will get recognized. You know, this is the bottom line. Your work always talks. Where just talking will not help you. You know, there are some. If you just talk, uh, uh, no, it's not going to help you. Your work, good work, will come out in the open. Record every video of yours. Yes. Spend that every, money on a camera. Every case you do, you better record. And spend that money, that little bit extra on a beam splitter, and a camera is worth it. One Gucci bag less, <laughs> one Armani suit less will not make a difference. Yeah, of course. Nobody is coming to a conference to see you carrying a Gucci bag. <laughs> True. Or wear an Armani suit. True. Do you believe anybody is seeing it? No. No. They are coming to listen to you. And they see, are coming yeah. to see your videos. So spend that extra money on a beam splitter, on a video camera, and record. It's not going to be expensive. Even if I have to save my cost or buying one less Armani suit or one less Gucci it's bag, to be honest, it's worth it. Well, especially these days, you can put a mobile phone, which all have high definition cameras. There are adapters, so you can put that on your operating microscope. Hundred percent. Yeah, and you can get very good video recordings. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we had we had a, a videos featuring these topics of how to connect your mobile phone to your camera. It's on Cataract Coach. You can people people can search that up. Another thing which I tell people is to get the post op. I see videos, but I don't see the post op at the end. Oh, sure, sure. Very important is, and when you see the post op, there should be a pre op comparison. So at the end, I always have a pre op, post op. That's a, By and large. That's a good point. You know because what? I think I'm guilty of that. I don't do that. I have it for a few videos, but for most of mine, I show the technique, but I don't show a pre-op and post-op photo. See, it's okay if you're doing a simple case, but when you top like P-Deck, which I'm doing, you know, if I show you a white scarred cornea, you know, and we'll show that video later on, and then I show it clear. You got to see the pre-op and you got to yeah, see the post-op. Sure. Because if I only show post-op clear cornea, then I don't know how did it connect to... What is it connect to? That connection comes if there's a pre-op and there's a post-op. The before then and that after. That combination comes through. Like before and after. Before and after. It's like, you know, your makeover, you know, in your Hollywood, you know, they show somebody who's this, that, wearing thick glasses, and suddenly it's all gone after lacing. Oh, the, oh, the makeover. Yes. So they have a pre-op and a post-op. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, plastic surgeons do it all the time, right? Exactly. But imagine if they show one very beautiful girl or a very fit guy without showing how he was before it doesn't give you the effect but if you show a bulky obese person and suddenly becoming thin it hits your head immediately yeah good point yeah okay i'm gonna have to remember now i'll have to start showing more before and afters from my videos that's that's a that's a great point it is tough to connect because what you do is you forget which patient connects to which video but if you start Focusing on that and recording your videos and mentioning and remembering the reference number of that patient, you will connect that particular post op to that particular video. Sure, makes the video more impactful. In your Fake O Nightmares course, again, one of my very favorite ones because I think you're one of the pioneers who really are happy to show complications and, more importantly, how to recover from complications. What are some of the most important uh, videos you've shown in Fago Nightmares of, of how to recover? Is it PC rupture? Is it drop nucleus? Fago I wound think, burn? I think very simple is, for example, one of the most important things is something which happens to everybody very often. And we don't know. That is, you've got a PC rupture and you've got a nucleus in the eye still. Sure. Now there's a problem because I have a nucleus, but I don't have a capsule. How do I remove that nucleus? Without the nucleus going down. Oh, your IOL so that's scaffold, when yes. IOL scaffold comes inside. So, what when we show IOL scaffold, it's a, why I give this as an example is it is something which anybody can do. You don't have to be a super surgeon to do an IOL scaffold. If you're an average surgeon also or a below average surgeon, anybody has a nucleus, all they have to do is put an IOL behind the nucleus and then emulsify. Yeah. The nucleus will not go down. I don't have to refer it to retina surgeon. Yeah. So my message here is these, rather than if I show a very complicated case, everybody might clap, but there might not be a great take-home message. You know, whereas an IOL scaffold is an example. 
is a simple thing which anybody can do. Yeah. So for sure. in a fake or nightmare course, I will combine both because I do not know that audience there. There might be a Uday Devgan sitting there, and I might be a very junior Uday Devgan sitting there also. Sure, sure. So both spectrums are there. The junior Uday Devgan might want to learn the scaffold. The senior Uday Devgan, the present Uday Devgan, might want to say, oh, "How does Amar handle these crazy cases?" Right. Anterior segment so, transplantation. Yeah. So you know what happens is I get a mix in my videos, yeah. where I show some basic, then I go to some jing bang stuff. That gives. That covers my audience as a whole. So the whole spectrum, <clears throat> whole spectrum. Because I don't know what the audience is. There might be a, there are people who are very qualified there, who know the basics. I don't have to teach them that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I, I get your point. Yeah, you just, you want to you never know who's in the audience. You want to give the full spectrum of cases, <clears throat> so people can can uh, understand. For example, I give you an example. <clears throat> I tell people, <clears throat> you don't want to learn glued iol. P deck, no problem. Learn four throw pupillary plasty. Why? It is something which catches on easy. Yeah. Tomorrow you have an iris coloboma. You can repair it in no time. Tomorrow you have got an iris prolapse. <clears throat> you can correct it like that. So that's what I suggest people learn. These are simple things which anybody can learn from. <clears throat> yes. And replicate These simple techniques. Also the the <coughs> pinhole pupillary plasty, which is obviously a very brilliant idea for these guys with. Complicated corneas. See, I give you an example on pinhole pupillary. Is this patients come to me with let's say twenty six diopters astigmatism? Okay, and <clears throat> what they do in these cases is this: I tell everybody, and I have to give credit to Jack Holiday because when I started pinhole pupillary, I understood one thing: I needed somebody with great amount of knowledge of optics. Sure, and I roped in Jack. He helped me a lot. So a simple process which I tell people is go to the Pentacam holiday report. There will be six images, six six photographs, topographies. On the top of that, there'll be an HOA higher order abrasion. Look at it. Okay. We don't see that. Ude, the normal is zero point three. I had a patient who came to me from Philadelphia. Okay, this lady had pellucid marginal degeneration. Now, when she had pellucid marginal degeneration, I'll just see if I can send you that video. <clears throat> It'll be great if you can. One second, Uday. Sure. I'll just because it's important for your people to just see the video, and life will change immediately when they see it. Because this patient came to me from Philadelphia, and she was blind as a bat. Ding, ding, ding! Pardon the brief interruption. This case of pellucid marginal degeneration with an irregular cornea, which was solved by doing the pinhole pupil vasi technique, was featured yesterday on cataractcoach.com. Video number one thousand eight hundred sixty-seven. That was on Saturday, June seventeenth. So check that video out. You can see it in detail, and it'll explain you the technique and everything about this patient. Truly a beautiful case. Pictures worth a thousand words. A video's worth a million. Let's get back to the podcast. So, Amr, those are some amazing points. Really great learning here. I want to ask you, what's your final kind of advice for a young ophthalmologist who sees some amazing surgeons like you, where you've pioneered so much, you've written eighty books, have one hundred fifty eye hospitals, you've changed the face, and you've progressed ophthalmology to another level? And a, a young ophthalmologist think, gosh, how do I ever even achieve anything close? What words of wisdom or pearls do you have for the young ophthalmologist to achieve their maximum? My suggestion is very simple. They have to attend conferences, go on social media, get out of the comfort zone. <clears throat> get off the couch. Once they do that, they'll always be winners. When you go to a conference or you go and meet Uday Devgan, you will learn a lot from him. That's the answer. If you move out. Step out of your zone. You will learn, and you tomorrow you will be able to implement a small trip, trick, some small thing, small tip in your patients, which will help your patients see better, help them become better, which will make you a better surgeon. So my tip to all doctors is this: to move out, go to wet labs, 
go for surgeries to see from others operating step out don't worry about that gucci bags or armani suit they are not going to make your life okay what is going to make your life tomorrow is that one patient if he sees better because of you sure it will give you greater happiness than you are looking slightly smarter with an armani suit <clears throat> for sure and then keep up with that idea get off the couch okay to be a little uncomfortable get out of your comfort zone and learn a little bit more every time that small incremental growth over years is tremendous exactly thank you so much what a pleasure to have you on the podcast i want to say a big namaste to all those who are watching the podcast listening to the podcast and to uday and all those on cat track coach because i tell you what there's nothing better than learning from person like uday and i want to thank you uday for inviting me for this lovely podcast thank you so much and then tomorrow we're going to feature on the cataract coach channel some of the videos that you've previously sent me and i think there's a lot for us to learn lovely thank you omar bye bye thank you thank you for enjoying that podcast with me i trust that you learned a lot and had a great time really understanding such a brilliant man Remember we're going to do a new podcast every Sunday. You can watch them here on Cataract Coach, watch the video on YouTube, you can download the audio only version on Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, anywhere else you get your podcasts and remember we're doing a new one now every single week. See you soon.